Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the SDL series. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to handle multiple displays. So I'm not talking about necessarily stretching your window over two displays. Perhaps that can be a future tutorial if folks might be interested. But instead, what I'm talking about is how do you position your actual window on a display? And the reason you might want to do this is because you might have multiple displays that you want to show in a configuration menu in whatever multimedia or game app that you're building in SDL. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the code so we can understand what's going on here. So what I've got here is a sample that I've actually already written because it's more interesting to just probably see the different functions that we need to look at here. But how I learned about this is from the SDL2 API, you can go to the category and look at display and window management. And if we go ahead and look through here, we're going to find all sorts of commands that are interesting for manipulating the window and just figuring out a little bit about our display. In fact, you can even find out some detailed information like the number of drivers you have, for instance, which could be useful for debug output. So let's go ahead and do a quick code review of what I've got here. The sample, of course, is in the repository if you need it and see what we're doing. Now, I'm going to compile this on Linux here as you know that's my main working system, but if you'd like to see previous lessons in the series on how to do Windows and Mac, feel free to check that out. So what I've got here is first creating the actual window, then making sure that we have video available, again, since we're going to create a video uh, device, or rather a window that displays something from our video card and accesses all the graphics functions. Here's the actual creation of that window, and here's the new stuff here. So first and foremost, we want to figure out how many video displays do we have here. So let's just go ahead and do a search here. SDL get num video displays. And well, we're going to have hopefully at least one display available if you have a monitor. And again, that could be useful if you're trying to deploy your application on some system that doesn't have a monitor. For example, if you're trying to automate testing or do various things because you're running your game or multimedia application on a server with some integration tests. Anyway, there's a lot of different reasons why you might want to know this information. So that's where we have to start off from. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is store in a data structure the display dimensions of each of our displays that we find. So on my demo today, I have two displays, which I'll show you briefly, and I want to be able to store those. Uh, information about this regarding the width and the height of those displays. And then I can use that information to intelligently position my window somewhere, perhaps in the center of the screen or wherever you might like to do it. So there's a handy function here, SDL get display bounds. Let's go ahead and just take a look at this here. Uh, get display bounds, and I'll go ahead and take a look at this. So the display that we want to put things in and where we want to store this information. And again, these are SDL recs with an X, Y, a width, and a height. Okay, so that's the idea here. Now, if you're briefly searching through this, there was something called get display usable bounds here, which is also kind of interesting here to look at. Because again, if you're trying to develop a multi-platform application, and for example, if you're working on Apple's Mac OS, then for instance, the menu bar might occupy some space. So if you want to account for that, you can by using this separate function here. For now, I don't care about that because I'm just developing this uh, simple example for you, but just something to be aware of that again, SDL provides a lot of functionality for you to do cool things like this. So I'll go ahead and go back here. And in this demo, I'll go ahead and display the actual dimensions. And then I want to start displaying our window and positioning it. So what I'm going to do here is, again, just query some information about our window that we've created. Now, what is this window? Well, that's the window up here from SDL Create Window. And I can get some information about the window handle or the ID here. So again, let's just take a look at that. Get window ID. And this is just going to be some integer that you can uniquely identify a window in case you have multiple displays and have called SDL create window multiple times. Uh, that's what you'd have here. And then you'd figure out which display is my uh, window currently on with get window display index. So get window display index again right here. So we can figure out, OK, is it on my display peer or another one now? In order to make this an interesting demo here, I've gone ahead and coded up some logic here. So depending on the key I press on my keyboard, the zero or the one key, I will switch what window my 
uh, or what display my window shows up on. So with that said, let's go ahead to compiling this example. So here is the code to compile, and then I'll go ahead and run. And as soon as I do this, you might have noticed in a lot of my demos, the window doesn't pop up because again, my other display here, display zero, which is actually my larger monitor, is where the window goes by default. So I've got to drag it in here and we can see this here. And then I've got my other smaller window here, display one here. And interestingly, you can see that display zero here starts with the top corner being zero, zero, and then it is uh, 3,840 pixels wide by 2,160, or that's the resolution. And then my display one, well, starts at 970 by 20, 160. So it's already been shifted down 2160 pixels or the height of the previous display because they're sort of stacked on top of each other. Now, just to give a little illustration of this, again, if you go into your display settings, you'll see something like this where I have my larger display on top of my smaller display. That's this second one listed here. So again, if I reposition these windows or do different things like slide it over, uh, let's just go ahead and do that. Apply the settings which is always risky to do during a live recording, but here we are. So let's go ahead and see what happened here if I rerun this program. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop it, recompile, rerun, and we'll see that it hasn't been shifted over as much. Now, let me go ahead and reset our settings here to what I liked here somewhere in the middle here reapply and fingers crossed we don't crash when changing settings and we're back in action here so let me go ahead and just cut that down one more time and again you can see or understand what's going on there now let me recompile rerun here and now actually do the uh interesting part of the demo, or at least what I feel is interesting, where I'm going to take this window and I'm going to press the zero key. Now you won't be able to see my window because it disappeared. So give me one moment here to change my actual display of what I'm recording here. And if I choose my other monitor, you'll see, well, here's the window here on some other display here where I've got everything set up. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit the one key, which will move this window here. So if I select it, press one, and then change my display here. We'll see that it is appropriately positioned here on the display dimensions here, always going on the top left corner here. Now, again, I could center this or maybe do some tricks or whatever I wanted, but that's just how it works here. So let me go ahead and close this down and then take a final look at this documentation. So this demo today is about just understanding how you can display your window in different windows, if you have multiple displays, how you might want to build some configuration. But there's a lot of other neat things that you can query, such as the brightness, the gamma values, and these are all things that you could also set, the window title, and so on, and so on, or you know whatever various attributes that you'd want to do. SDL has a very rich API for doing this, and I think that's what makes it a very useful library because it gives you that low-level control. Do most folks need to use this? Probably not until you get to a configuration stage for your game or multimedia application where you'd want to set those configuration options. So folks, with that said, I hope this was an interesting video on a topic you might not have known about using SDL2, but an important one to know that these features exist. And again, it's another reason I really like SDL2 because it's such a feature-packed API, which gives you low-level control over almost every setting that you'd want, whether you're developing on Windows, Linux, Mac, or consoles, for instance. So with that said, folks, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. I hope you're enjoying the series. I hope you're subscribed so you can catch all the next SDL2 or other lessons on my channel. Thanks for your time, and we'll see you very soon.